Some polynomials are easily factored simply because they look a certain way, and we call these special factoring forms. And in this video, we're going to take a look at a couple different uh, special factoring forms. We're going to look at a sum of cubes and a difference of cubes. So if your polynomial fits this template or looks like this, then we can automatically factor it simply because it looks this way. So how do these guys factor? Well, we'll, we'll start with the sum of cubes. Um, first of all, there's a little set of parentheses that's gonna have two terms, and then a larger set of parentheses that's gonna have three terms. And actually the same thing is true for a difference of cubes, so we'll go ahead and put these as well. And matter of fact, they even have the same terms inside. So the um, smaller parentheses will have an a and a b, and the larger parentheses will have an a squared, an ab, and a b squared. And a matter of fact, that's the same thing for a dis difference of cubes. You have an a, a b, an a squared, an ab, and a b squared. The only difference in these two factorizations is gonna be the pluses and minuses that we put between these terms. So for a sum of cubes, the signs go like this. It's a plus and a minus and then a plus. And for a difference of cubes, it's a minus, a plus, and a plus. And if you're listening to me say this, you might be thinking, oh gosh, Devin, you're going too fast. I, I'm not gonna remember all that. That's a lot to memorize just for a special factoring form. Well, I've got a nice, easy way to remember how all of those signs work. Um, just remember the word SOAP. S-O-A-P, SOAP. And the reason I say remember that word is the S, you can remember the word same, then opposite, and then the AP stands for always positive. So SOAP, same, opposite, always positive. Now, why, why is that gonna be helpful for us? Well, here's how it works. Let's look at a sum of cubes here. So because it's a sum, we're adding a cubed and b cubed. Well, check this out. Here's how the signs go. It's the same sign, it's a plus, the opposite sign, and then always positive, right? We have a plus sign here. Then what about a difference of cubes? We have the same sign, the opposite sign being a plus, and then always positive. So that little word there, SOAP, very easy to remember, helps you remember how the signs go in a difference of cube or cubes or sum of cubes factorization. Same, opposite, always positive. So let's try two examples here and see if we can do this. Uh, we'll start with kind of an easier one and then we'll look at a harder one uh, in our, for our second example. Um, this one, P cubed minus 27. Uh, it has two terms, which automatically makes me think it's a special factoring form, uh, either a difference of squares or a uh, difference of cubes, one of those two. And because it's p to the third and 27 is 3 to the third, I'm definitely thinking difference of cubes. So if I think that's what it is, then here's how you start these factorizations. You need to start with just empty parentheses with something cubed minus something cubed and try to figure out what, what would go in the blanks here so that you would get p cubed minus 27. Like I said, this is kind of a simple example. It's pretty obvious to me that this would have to be p to the third minus three to the third. So that's p cubed minus 27. And the reason we have to do that is this helps us identify what our a and b are. So our a is p and our b is three. And so we're gonna set up our factorization here. Remember there's a one little parentheses and one giant parentheses. And the way the A, B terms go is there's an A, which in my case is a P, and then a B, and then an A squared, which in my case is P squared. Then there's an A, B, which would be P times three or three P, and then a B squared, which would be nine. So A, B, a squared, AB, B squared. And now the only issue is the signs. Is it a plus, a minus, a minus, or a minus, a plus, and a plus, or how, how exactly do these signs work out? Well, remember, what's your word again? It's SOAP, S-O-A-P. And what does SOAP stand for? Same, opposite, always positive. So when I see that I have a difference of cubes, I'm simply gonna put the same sign, 
the opposite sign, and then always positive for the last sign. And we're done. This is the factored form of p to the third minus 27. All right, let's try a little bit harder example. Uh, this guy is not exactly a polynomial, but he can still be factored because he's still a sum of cubes. 8x to the sixth plus 1 over y to the third. Um, I see a sum here in two terms. That's what makes me think it's a special factoring form. And I know 8 is 2 cubed, and x to the sixth is something cubed, and 1 over y to the third would be something cubed. So I'm fairly confident this, that, that this would be something cubed plus something cubed. Let me see if I can figure out what. All right, so what to the third would give you eight? Well, that would be a two, of course. Now think carefully about this. What to the third power would give you x to the sixth? Think about that. It would actually be x to the second because x to the second to the third, you'd multiply the exponents as we know, which would give us x to the sixth. And then one over y to the third. You could think of this as one to the third over y to the third. So this would be one over y all to the third. So we have our a is gonna be two x squared, and we have our b, which is gonna be one over y. Um, so I have a sum of cubes now, and I even know um, what my a and what my value for b is. So here we go, I've got a small parentheses in the factorization, and then one that's large. Then I've got an a, a b, an a squared, an a b, and a b squared. So let me write those down. So I've got a 2x squared, a 1 over y. Now what would a squared be? What's 2x squared quantity squared? Well that would be 4x to the fourth. 2 squared is 4, and x squared squared would be x to the fourth. And then an ab would be 2x squared times 1 over y. And then lastly, we'd have b squared, which would be 1 squared over y squared, or just 1 over y squared. But then we're at the finish line, and I'm still not sure what these signs should be. So again, remember that, that word that we mentioned earlier, SOAP, S-O-A-P, same, opposite, always positive. So we have a sum of cubes. So we're going to go the same sign, the opposite sign, and always positive.